Hey guys, my name is Terry. Welcome to my channel, English with Terry. So, I have a very special video for you today. It's the first of two parts about five simple ways that we can use the present perfect. Now, the present perfect is a complicated grammar point for a lot of people. So, with these two videos, I want to show you five simple situations of when you use it. Okay? English with Terry. So let's start with the first idea. It's describing an experience you had in the past. Let's take for example, I have been to Rome or I've been to New York, okay? Now it's an experience in the past, but we don't know when. We have no idea when it happened, but we're just focused on the experience and it happened in the past sometime. We don't know when. The idea of the present perfect is connecting the present and the past is that you're speaking about this experience now, right? I have been to Rome. I have been to New York. Now, I personally, I have been to Rome, but I have never been to New York. So we will use this in the way of like visiting places. I have been to and a place. I have been to London. I have been to Paris. I've been to Madrid. Well, that's not exactly true. I have been to London. I have been to Madrid, but I have never been to Paris. Another way we can use it, simple way, is I have tried. I have tried and it can be a food or it can be an activity. I have tried oysters. I have tried sushi. I have tried rock climbing, right? So when we say this kind of sentence or we use present perfect, I have tried sushi. I have been to France. There's zero information about when specifically. We are just talking about the experience and focused on the experience and we're saying, I have tried sushi. So write in the comments, what are some things that you have tried or places you have been? Hmm? Now the important point that present perfect does not have exact information about when. You can say, I have been to France, but because of the specific information, we cannot say, I have been there last year. In that case, it would say, I was there last year. So it's the past simple when you have more specific information about when because I was there last. The present perfect is the not specific time. I have been there. I'm just talking about the experience and I, I have been there. The second way that we can use the present perfect is when you see someone again after a long time. So if you think about old friends, old friends from university or from work or people you have not seen in a very long, there's different expressions. I have not seen you for a long time or we haven't seen him for ages. For ages is this expression to mean a, a long time. So I haven't seen you for ages. So you think about the last time you saw that person, which is maybe two years ago, and then you see the person again. I haven't seen you for ages. I haven't seen you for two years, you know. It's that moment that you're meeting the person again. Now, we need to be very clear about some of the common mistakes. Some of the common mistakes are when people say, a long time I don't see you. I haven't seen you for a long time. English needs this present perfect idea to connect this point in the past to now. The same idea here that we had the last time you saw the person, which was two years ago, and, the per and see the person now. The present perfect connects those two points. I haven't seen you, almost like blocks of time. But just to put this in the present tense is not correct. You need to be careful about that. Or we don't see him for ages. Again, it's not correct. You say we haven't seen him for ages. Do you see the idea? Third way is to tell someone that a long time has passed since the last time you did something. Okay, so an example would be, I have not drunk coffee for three months. And this is true. I have a problem with my stomach and I just stopped drinking coffee three months ago. I haven't gone to the gym for a month. This is also true when I was writing this video. I was very sick. In the weeks before, I had a lot of problems and I just didn't go to the gym. But now that I'm showing this idea that a long time has passed, there's the last time you did the activity, there's the last time I drank a coffee, there's the last time I went to the gym, and now I want to show and express how this long time happened. There's the last time I'm speaking now. 
I have not drunk coffee for three months. I haven't gone to the gym for a month. I really need to go. And it can be a really long time. I haven't had a coffee for three years. Or another idea is that you can say, I haven't played the guitar since I was a teenager. But here you need to be very, very careful not to say, since I am a teenager, I don't play. We cannot use the present tense to express this idea. In English, you will always need the present perfect to express these long time ideas. As in, I, you cannot say, I don't drink coffee since three months. This is completely incorrect and you must understand this point okay okay guys that ends part one i hope you liked it please click like if you like the video and share with your friends to help them understand the present perfect in the next part i'm going to finish the last two ways that we can use it so please subscribe to my channel don't miss that video and of course if you would like a free listening fluency strategies course you can find the link in the description here where i talk about all the strategies that i used to be fluent in French, Spanish, Portuguese, and Italian. Okay guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in part two.